Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about schistosoma. It is a traumatoid a fluke. I have a detailed video on traumatoids, find its link in the description or in the top right corner. Before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. Schistosoma. Schistosoma is a traumatoid a fluke. It is responsible for causing schistosomiasis. It exists as, exists as two separate genders. Here in the picture you can see this is the male gender and this is a female one. But both live attached to each other. Schistosomes are also called blood flukes. Schistosoma is further classified on the basis of location where it causes infection. For gastrointestinal tract, it is further classified into Schistosoma mansonar and Schistosoma japanicum. And for urinary tract, it is uh, classified as Schistosoma hematobium. outline, I've introduced you guys to the Schistosoma. Now we'll talk about its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and finally the prevention. Before starting the morphology, I'd like to tell there are certain stages that exist in the life cycle of a traumatoid. First one is egg, then comes the larva. Larva exist in three forms. First one is myrosidium, then sporocyst, and then cercariae. The third stage is adult fluke. Morphology. Morphology of schistosoma mansonae. The first thing is egg. It is oval shaped. It is 115 to 175 micrometers long by 45 to 47 micrometers wide. It is approximately 150 micrometers in diameter. It has pointed spines towards the broader base on one side and these spines are called lateral spines. Here you can see these are the lateral spines. Lava. Lava of Schistosoma mensona exist in three stages. I will start with Myrosidium first. It is pure shaped and it elongates as it, it ages. It is 136 micrometers long by 55 micrometers Its body is covered by enucleate epidermal plates. Plates are separated by dermal ridges and epidermal cells give off numerous hair-like cilia on the body. Next surface. one is the cariae. It has bifurcated tail, classically called furcae. And uh, the word furcae means fork in the Latin language. It is 0.2 micrometers long and 47 micrometers wide. Adult fluke. The female has a cylindrical body. It is longer and thinner than the male's body. It is 1.2 to 1.6 centimeters long by 0.016 centimeters wide. It has the general appearance of a round worm. The female parasite is darker and looks gray because of the presence of some body hormones. Normally, the adult fluke of Schistosoma mansonae is white in color. It has funnel shaped oral sucker at its anterior end and a second pediculated ventral sucker. Here you can see in this picture the female uh, is darker and the male is there, which has an anterior oral sucker and the posterior ventral sucker. Next come the Schistosoma hematobium. Let's start with its egg first. It is elongated 110 to 170 micrometers long by 40 to 70 micrometers wide. It has a distinctive terminal spine. Its shell are clear and it contains myrosidia. Here in the picture you can see it. Adult fluke. As I've mentioned earlier that it exists as two separate genders. One is male and the other one is female. Male is 10 to 15 millimeter long and female is 16 to 22 millimeters long. Male has certain deep grooves that are called gynecophoral canals, schist. And female lies in these canals. There are some small nodules, the tubercles, present on the surface of the fluke. Um, on the male fluke while the female is pulled up. There are many tiny spines on suckers and inside gynecophoral canals and female is more slender. There are two suckers. One is anterior that is called oral sucker and one is posterior that is called ventral sucker. Here you can see in this diagram this is the male fluke and this is the female fluke and both are attached to each other and female resides in that schist, the gynecophoral canal. Next come the schistosoma japanicum. It's 
eggs are round or oval and are 80 millimeters long by 60 millimeters wide and has a small spur on one you end. You can see in the picture the arrow is pointing towards the lava. Myrosidium. It hatches from egg. It is free swimming, ovoid and it is covered with cilia and it has a complex of glands at the front Next end. Next form is porosis. No mouse or gut is present. It reproduces asexually twice. When it reproduces asexually for the first time, it creates daughter sporocyst and when it reproduces asexually for the second time it gives uh, rise to cercaria its offspring cercaria it is 200 by 70 millimeters in size and it has two flukes adult fluke it is 15 millimeters in length males are shorter and stouter than females Males have a long groove on the underside female resides in that groove both have a sucker around the mouth called an acetabulum and the skin of adult fluke is coated with tiny spines, ridges and sensory organs. Here you can see in the picture, the three species can be distinguished by the appearance of their eggs in the microscope. Schistosoma mensonae eggs have a prominent lateral spine as you can see, whereas Schistosoma japanicum eggs have a very small lateral spine and Schistosoma hematobium eggs have a terminal spine. Schistosoma mensonae and Schistosoma japanicum adults live in the mesentric veins, whereas Schistosoma hematobium lives in the veins training the urinary bladder. Schistosomes are therefore known as blood flukes. Habitat. Definitive hosts are the human beings and the intermediate hosts are fresh water snails. Transmission. Transmission occurs via fecal dermal root or urinary dermal and humans root. are infected when the free-swimming folk tail cercariae penetrate the skin. The life cycle of Schistosoma has two stages. First one is human cycle and the second one is snail cycle. After penetrating the skin, the cercariae differentiate to larvae, Schistosomula, enter the blood and are carried via the veins into the arterial circulation. Those that enter the superior mesenteric artery pass into the portal circulation and reach the liver, where they mature into adult flukes. Schistosoma mensonae and Schistosoma japanicum adults migrate against the portal flow to reside in the mesenteric venules. Schistosoma hematobium adults reach the bladder veins through venous plexus between the rectum and the bladder. In their definitive venous site, the female lays fertilized eggs which penetrate the vascular endothelium and enter the gut or bladder lumen respectively. The eggs are excreted in feces or urine and must enter fresh water where they release ciliated swimming larvae called myrosidia. The myrosidia then penetrate snails and undergo further development and multiplication to produce many cercaria. The three schistosomes use different species of snails as intermediate hosts. Cercaria leave the snail, enter freshwater and complete the cycle by penetrating the human skin. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of schistosoma. It starts here. When eggs are shed from the infected human in the urine, the three species can be distinguished by the appearance of their eggs in the microscope. Eggs hatch and release myrosidia. The myrosidia penetrates snail tissue. Sporocysts develop into free swimming cercaria released from snail into water. Cercaria penetrate the skin, cercaria lose tails during penetration and become schistosomuli. Then it enters the circulation migration. to portal blood in liver and maturation into adults. Paid adult flukes migrate to mesenteric venules or ball or rectum and venous plexus of bladder and eggs are shed there and they are identified in urine and feces. Pathogenesis. Most of the pathologic findings are caused by the presence of eggs in liver, spleen or wall of gut or bladder. Eggs in the liver induce granulomas which lead to fibrosis, hepatomegaly and portal hypertension. The granulomas are formed in response to antigens secreted by the eggs. The hepatocytes are usually undamaged and the liver function tests. The LFTs remain normal. Portal hypertension leads to splenomegaly. Schistosoma mensonae acts damage the wall of distal colon, inferior mesenteric venules, whereas Schistosoma japanicum acts damage the walls of both the small and large intestines, superior and inferior mesenteric venules. 
The damage is due both to digestion of tissue by proteolytic enzymes produced by the egg and to the host inflammatory response that forms granulomas in the venules. The eggs of Schistosoma hematobium in the wall of the bladder induce granulomas and fibrosis, which can lead to carcinoma of the bladder, evading the host defenses. Schistosomes have evolved a remarkable process of evading the host defenses. There is evidence that their surface becomes coated with host antigens, thereby limiting the ability of the immune system to recognize them as foreign antigens. Epidemiology. Epidemiology of schistosomiasis depends on the presence of specific freshwater snails that serve as intermediate hosts. More than 150 million people in the tropical areas of Africa, Asia and Latin America are affected. Schistosoma mensona is found in Africa and Latin America, including Puerto Rico. Whereas Schistosoma hematobium is found in Africa and the Middle Schistosoma East. Schistosoma japanicum is found only in Asia and is the only one for which domestic animals, for example, water buffalo and pigs, act as an important reservoir. Clinical findings. First we will talk about acute state, then we will talk about the chronic state. Most patients are asymptomatic but chronic infections may become symptomatic. The acute stage which begins shortly after circarial penetration consists of itching and dermatitis followed two to three weeks later by fever, chills, diarrhea, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly. Eosinophilia is seen in response to migrating larvae. This stage usually resolves spontaneously. The chronic stage can cause significant morbidity and mortality. In patients with Schistosoma mensona and Schistosoma japanicum infection, gastrointestinal hemorrhage, hepatomegaly, and massive splenomegaly can develop. The most common cause of death is exsanguination from ruptured esophageal varices. Patients infected with Schistosoma hematobium have hematuria as a chief early complaint Superimposed bacterial urinary tract infections, the UTIs, occur frequently. Swimmer's itch, which consists of pruritic papules, is a frequent problem in many lakes in the United States. The papules are an immunologic reaction to the presence in the skin of circariae of non-human schistosomes. The pruritic papules appear within minutes to hours after exposure, indicating that it is an immediate immunoglobin IgE-mediated hypersensitivity. These non-human schistosomes are incapable of replicating in humans and do not cause disseminated disease. Lab diagnosis. First, we'll need samples like sputum, urine, and feces. Then we will go for microscopy. You know what? Diagnosis depends on finding the characteristic ova in the feces or urine. And the large lateral spine of schistosoma mensona and the rudimentary spine of schistosoma japanicum are typical, as is the large terminal spine of schistosoma hematobium. Liver function tests are normal. Serologic tests are not useful, and on blood tests, we will see moderate eosinophilia treatment. Acute stage usually resolves spontaneously, but prazacontal is a treatment of choice for all the three species. Prevention. Prevention involves proper disposal of human waste and eradication of snail host when possible. Swimming in areas of endemic infection should be avoided. Let's review everything real quick. The organism is schistosome. Mode of transmission is through penetration. Intermediate hosts are different types of snails for different species of schistosoma. Its definitive hosts are human beings, and the main sites affected in human body are veins of colon, small intestine, liver, and urinary bladder. On diagnosis, we will see large lateral or terminal spines of different species. Treatment of choice is prazicone. It has no insect vector and the stage that infects humans are circariae that penetrate the skin. Stages in humans most associated with disease. Adult flukes living in mesenteric or bladder veins lay eggs that cause granulomas. Important stage outside humans are mericidium, the ciliated larvae that infects the snail and circariae that infects the human beings.
it's kind of covered and that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it you've learned something don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials i've got my instagram i've got my twitter and i really till next time assalamu alaikum